its power. Father, let your blood be felt in this meeting right now to wash away sins. Jesus, may the stripes that you bore at the cross heal broken bodies tonight of disease. For you said in your word, that you heal our diseases and that the affliction you suffered was for our health, our physical health, as well as our spiritual health. So come and heal your people tonight, Lord. Those who are sick in body, I pray that your power would be extended into their homes tonight and you would quicken their mortal bodies. Thank you for your blood, Lord. It is our claim to the divine inheritance of the Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, worshipers. Come on in from all across America and all around the world. We welcome you to yet another chapter of An Hour with Jesus. Can you think of a better place to be than with Jesus for a whole hour? <laughs> These are the fastest hours of the week. Many people have told me that over the years. And I have myself experienced that because when you do get caught up into the manifest presence of the Lord, time just flies by. It just flees so fast. Wow, that's a great byproduct of his presence. I've all been in those meetings. Some of them I've held myself when I'm looking at my own watch, wondering how much longer we have to go. Too many church services where, where it's just an endurance test. And that's not the way that it was set up to be. When the disciples set up the New Testament church after Christ rose again and ascended into heaven. It was exciting places to be in those homes. They were singing in the spirit. They were singing in the natural they were, they were testifying of God's goodness. They were teaching the word of God to one another. They were laying hands on sick and people were being healed because the life of God, not religion, relationship, was alive and well in the early church. And oh, how we need a revival of relationship across this planet in 2024. Not talking just about a few days here and a few days there, I'm talking about a spiritual renewal, a great awakening, if you will. That's what we need. That's what we're desperate for. And I believe it's coming. I believe he's coming like he's never come before. And I'm looking forward to the new things that are in store for the body of Christ and those many multitudes that are going to come in from the world and receive Jesus as their Savior in these last days. Praise God. Well, let's see. Not this weekend, but next weekend, if you're in Southern California, please join me at the Legacy Center for an evening of worship with Noel Robinson and Phil Driscoll and myself. We're going to have, I believe, just a grand time of wonderful worship unto the King. If you know people that live out there or you have friends that know people or whatever, Make sure they're aware that it's a free admission, but the Legacy Center uh, asks that you would register so they have an idea of how many to plan for. Um, I suppose, well, you can go to our website, newglory.org, and find out more about that. You may just be able also to Google the Legacy Center, San Diego, California, and find out uh, the, spe the specifics, the particulars about that meeting right there as well as directions on how to get there and that kind of thing. All right, and then Liz and I are going over to Hawaii from there and ministering with my friend John Rogers at Dora Faith Fellowship on Sunday, February 4th. Looking forward to that too, as well as a few days of not eight-degree weather. <laughs> Can pretty much guarantee, unless God has really turned the climate tables upside down, that Hawaii will be uh, much, much warmer than we've been experiencing, especially during the night hours here in the Dallas area. It's been cold. Today it got warmer. Tomorrow it's going to get warmer again. And then another cold blast is coming in, I think, over the weekend. 
but we'll take anything we can get right now. And I know a lot of you have similar stories of it just being really, really bitter cold. Just make sure you take care of yourself. You don't go out without uh, proper clothing on and um, just be wise. All right. Wise as serpents, gentle as doves. I love that scripture. I need to study more about that scripture because I think there's a real key there and why Jesus spoke about those two things. Praise the Lord. Okay, is that about it, Tara? Yeah, I think that's about it. At least until I think of something else. I don't know. I'm just glad you're here. And I'm glad I'm here. It's my favorite hour of the week. I'm glad the Holy Spirit is here. Liz is on the other side of the cameras helping out again and keeping things running smoothly. Sometimes she'll make a comment there in the chat window to say hello to folks. That's pretty cool, too. We want you to experience Jesus, his love, his life. Praise God.
I will bless thee, O Lord, with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O thee, O Lord. <clears throat> when I was a religious person, I used to criticize artists, Christian artists, who would hum and ooh and ah and la 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 through songs. Because there was no spoken word, there was no substance. And then the Lord showed me my youngest son. <laughs> oh, God does these things. He said, you know, your youngest son, Drew, when he, he was like all of maybe seven years old, he would walk through the house with a bounce in his step, just whistling. And it always brought a smile to my face. My little boy just whistling. Because as you've heard me say before, you can't be sad and whistle. Never works. <laughs> can't be depressed and whistle a tune whistling is a sign of contentment and my son was very content and it brought his dad great great joy to hear him whistle around the house <laughs> and the father says <clears throat> look in the mirror i love it when you hum to me I love all expressions of heartfelt worship to me. And if that's a heartfelt expression, I love it. I love the sounds you make. I love the songs my children sing. I love the expressions of praise and the intimate worship that they send to my throne. So I learned a lesson from my youngest son. I've learned so many lessons from my children, I can't keep track of all of them. That's just the way it is. I think God gave us kids so that we could learn way more about him and way more about ourselves. Praise the Lord.
So let the oil of the Lord fill your vessels this hour. I've already prayed this for you. And let the song of the Lord set you free.
where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I can tell when I go to a new church in the first five minutes of a service, the level of liberty that they are experiencing. If the Holy Spirit is free there, there is a spirit of liberty. If he's not, you got a lot more religious exercise going on. I've had all I ever want of that. I want his liberty in my worship, in my learning of the word. Freedom. It is for freedom that Christ has made us free. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus, for the freedom that your work at the cross took care of for us once and for all. Thank you, Lord, for the freedom of the Holy Spirit. Oh, so wonderful to be in those atmospheres, Father. I long for them all the time. Praise the Lord. May we experience your true freedom more and more and more in 2024. Can't help but rhyme that sometimes. Praise God. to be um, just sharing the, the love chapter again every few months. I love to do that for myself as well as those who are watching and listening because it's just 
one of the most important chapters in the Word of God. How marvelous, how wonderful. In my song, while I have my breath, with my last breath, shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful, because it didn't depend upon anything that I did to earn it. <laughs> oh, how marvelous, how wonderful is our Savior's love for you and for me. We need never to grow weary about singing on that subject. It should be the theme of every gathering of believers every single time they meet together. Let's talk about the Savior's love for us. Let's sing about his love. Let's declare his love to the nations. Let's be his love to our neighbors and the people we work with and the people we meet in the marketplace. Let's be the manifest love of God Love in action, doing something extravagant for someone else to show his love for them. Amen? Praise the Lord.
just been so busy lately just making plans for this year and it seems like it's just endless sometimes and different things that have to come together and it just it's easy to get just lost in it and forget that we are to be sons lovers of God before anything else. So this is kind of appropriate. Lord, I'm thirsty for the living water. And Lord, I hunger
touched me, touched you, and made us whole. Praise the Lord. Mm. All right. Time is moving right on in this fastest hour of the week. <laughs> if you have your Bibles... I'm going to read the, the easy listening tonight. We're not in a, a doctrinal study of the Word. We're just reading through 1 Corinthians 13, so I'm going to use the Message Bible for that. It just has a nice flowing read to it, and it really hits home in this day and age in which we live. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter from the Message If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, wow, but don't have love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate, wow. I've heard ministers who have what they call a silver tongue, they can absolutely spellbind you with their ability to deliver the Word of God. I'm thinking of a, of a man uh, from my youth, a classical Pentecostal preacher. I don't think to this day I've ever heard the word delivered with more Anointing, beauty, eloquence, it was a beautiful thing. And just, you sat there just, uh, just under his anointing, and it was just like you didn't want it to stop. And that was, again, one of those times when 25, 30 minutes goes by, and it's like, didn't he just start five minutes ago? <laughs> but if he did that without love, it does not amount to anything. I know this man was not guilty of that, but this is what Paul is talking about. Apparently, Paul saw a, saw a good bit of this even back then that we can see today if you have perceptive eyes and ears. If I speak, verse 2, God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps. But I don't love, I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor, and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, those are pretty huge acts right there. Imagine giving yourself to martyrdom for the sake of the kingdom, but you don't have love in your heart. You've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I am bankrupt without love now I love this part love never gives up did you hear that those of you who have been praying for a wayward son or daughter for years and years and years or a brother or sister or a mother or father or a spouse love never gives up I have a friend from high school whose son has just made a mess out of his life. He has stolen jewelry from his mother's bedroom to fund his drug habit. That's pretty bad. She still loves him. I saw a, an ad, a post not real long ago and I thought, my, my, my. That is unfailing love. 
That's agape right there. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. <laughs> A little bit of envy there. Don't we all battle that in some way? Looking at the neighbor's car? Women looking at another woman and wanting to wish they could look more like her? Men looking at the sports figure and wish they just had done a little bit more practice and training so they could be a jock athlete. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. It doesn't have a swelled head. Mmm. God hates arrogance. He who exalteth himself shall be humbled. I've never seen it fail yet. It seems to be an area of life, whether you're a believer or not, that you cannot escape. If you do not humble yourself, and I'm talking about preachers, I'm talking about politicians, I'm talking about worship leaders, I'm talking about housewives and husbands and students if you don't humble yourself you will be humbled because love does not have a swelled head that's all that means I am better than you I am something special you better realize it when I walk in the room more grace, dear Lord. It doesn't force itself on others. It isn't always me first. <laughs> oh, the narcissist in all of us likes that one, doesn't like that one very much. Doesn't fly off the handle. Love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. See that guy over there? That's the third time he's done that. That's his third marriage over there. What? If God forgives, what am I doing holding that guy in judgment? Love doesn't do that. It wants the best for him, that he can get his life straightened out. It doesn't revel when others grovel. Love takes pleasure in the flowering of truth. It puts up with anything. <laughs> I love that. I like that. I got to keep moving here. Love trusts God always. Good word. Love always looks for the best. That's a great thing to pursue. What's the good side of that person that has so many unbeautiful stuff about them? Love never looks back. Never looks back. The past is dead. Love keeps going to the end. Love never dies. Inspired speech will be over someday. Praying in tongues, that will end. Understanding will reach its limit. We know only a portion of the truth. And what we say about God is always incomplete. But when the complete arrives, that's Jesus, our incompletes will be canceled. That's when we will know him See him as he is and know him as we're known. Verse 11, when I was an infant at my mother's breast, I gurgled and cooed like any infant. But when I grew up, I left those infant ways for good. We don't see yet. We don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist. But it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. 
We'll see it all then, see it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him directly, just as he knows us. But for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to do, Christian, to lead us toward that consummation. Number one, trust steadily in God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to what makes sense in the natural. Trust in the Lord and His Word. Number two, hope unswervingly. Don't look to the left or right. You know what truth is. Stay focused on the hope of your heart, the hope that you will be soon united with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the third and last thing, love extravagantly. Oh, my middle son, Kyle, who never expressed emotion when my mom died and he came home for the funeral and it was time to go back to school. He came up to me and for the first time in his life, he kissed me on my cheek. And the Lord said, that's the most extravagant gift your son could give you at this hour. Love extravagantly for the glory of the Father. And the best of the three is that extravagant love for God and for your fellow man. God bless you. I hope you've received something tonight. I thank you for tuning in. Hey, we could always use a gift if God puts it on your heart. You can do that at newglory.org. But until next week, either here or there, remember next weekend, not this, but next weekend, we'll be in San Diego. would love to see you at the Legacy Center. Until then, bye-bye for now.